This video is brought to you by Envato. Motion design is the beautiful love child of two mighty disciplines, graphic design and animation. In this short course, I'll show you how to harness the principles of both to make you a master motion designer in no time. I'm Jess for Envato Tuts Plus and I'm a professional graphic and motion designer. We'll start with a very quick historical aside for the nerds. While graphic design and animation as specific art forms have been around for about a hundred-ish years, motion graphics is fairly new. In the 1940s, artists and filmmakers like Norman McLaren and Mary Ellen Butte began making experimental animations by drawing on film stock. In the 50s, Saul Bass, already a well-established American graphic designer, pioneered the combining of graphics and animation with his titles for films like Cowboy and North by Northwest. John Whitney plays around with ex-World War II anti-aircraft technology and we get the first computer-powered animation. Scanimate is born and TV takes off. Fast forward through the 70s, 80s, 90s as computer power gets better and new software develops and plugins and scripts are written and installed and debugged and installed and we invent the internet and 3D animation and we get GIFs and VR and AR and projection mapping and Instagram and we get an entire field of people working on exciting and experimental ways of moving things around a screen that is just continuing to grow and get broader every year. Whew. It is a fantastically enthralling and very friendly world to get into. And you might think that in all this, there could never be a thread holding it all together. But two sets of guiding principles exist at the heart of pretty much every piece of motion graphics, the principles of graphic design and the principles of animation. In this video, I'm going to cherry pick the ones that I use and see the most often in the field of motion graphics. And I'll show you how to use them to your advantage. I've linked the project files in the description of this video, so if you want to grab those and follow along, please do. Having an unlimited subscription with Envato and being able to jump back and forward between my project and a huge library of downloadable assets is really great for trying out new ideas quickly and seeing what sticks. There is no good motion design without first good graphic design. So I have distilled what I think the most important graphic design principles are when relating to motion design. Hierarchy is the order in which your brain digests information, controlled by the weighting of elements in the design through the use of some of our other principles, things like scale, color, and alignment. Balance and tension is the relationship between elements in a design that provides the overall structure. This really drives a mood. Layouts can be purposefully balanced and in harmony, or they can be dynamic and invite tension between elements. Contrast is using opposing elements for greater distinction. For example, dark and light, warm and cool, sharp and soft. Color really comes into it here, so when choosing a palette, look to have a good amount of contrast in light and darkness and in saturation. Negative space considers the space around your elements to be as important as the element itself, allowing elements room to breathe, or you can overcrowd on purpose. Utilizing negative space is really important in creating that sense of tension. Lastly, repetition or rhythm is using the same fonts, colors, styles over and over again to maintain consistency and tell a story. You want to keep the audience engaged, not confuse them by switching the font halfway through your project. I'll keep these in a list on my desktop and whenever I'm designing anything, if something's falling flat or just doesn't seem right, I'll evaluate my frames against these principles. So see if you can use them or break them to make your design more interesting or appealing. Now, our set of animation principles was of course developed by the good folks at Disney, Frank and Ollie. And I think for some versions of motion graphics, these can all be relevant. But for today, we're going to focus on five that I think make the most impact. I'll show you how we use these in my native program After Effects with this little animated sequence that I've made to explain. The big difference between graphic design and animation is that animation is physical. Things have mass and weight and most importantly happen in the fourth dimension of time. So <laughs> block your animation first. Timing is essentially hierarchy in the fourth dimension. We can change the hierarchy over time to tell a story, to engage, and to surprise. Changing the speed of our action and the flow of our action changes the way our audience understands it, brings a different mood, and can be make or break in terms of the legibility of your animation. So, it's really important to block out your animation first. Storyboard. 
figure out what your key frames are, the main moments of action, before you decide what happens in between them. That's why these things are actually called keyframes. I have this little animation of a dodgeball game. It's five scenes with a bit of a twist at the end. I brought everything into After Effects, pre-comped each scene, and added in each scene's key frames. For example, the main throw action, the ball hitting his nose. Let's pop all of these into a main comp and see how they flow together. If they're all exactly the same length, there's not much story. We can change a lot about the feel of this animation just by changing how long each scene is on the screen. I think we need to give the fourth frame lots of time for the audience to have a bit of a huh moment before we reveal the size difference in our characters. This step may seem uninfluential and you will need to continue to tweak timing as you go, but a bit of prep here makes all the difference. Also think about your frame rate. Changing the frame rate gives a really different feel depending on what you go with. Our next one is easing. It's the velocity at which things move over time. The best advice I've ever received is to get super comfy with the graph editor and control your curves. Easing is how we refine our timing, adding character and showing things like mass and weight. In the graph editor, you can edit the curves based on speed or value. I like to use a mix of both as it gives me the most control, but essentially, the steeper the curve, the faster we go, the shallower the curve, the slower we go. Right now, I've just blocked in these main keyframes as hold frames, but let's add some easing to them and see what happens. Now onto our third principle, anticipation. Anticipation primes your audience for the next movement. Imagine you're playing dodgeball. The moment you see your opponent recoil their arm to chuck the ball in your direction, you know that ball is coming your way, if you've been paying attention. You can do this by adding a few frames of opposite animation before you launch into your main action. If we are thinking of our elements as having mass, it might also look good to add a little bit of squash and stretch in certain cases to show how that mass is being affected by the movement. Our fourth principle, follow through. Follow through is the reverse of anticipation. When that ball hits you, the energy released by your opponent's throw doesn't just disappear. Where it goes is the follow through. The ball bounces off you. Maybe you fall backwards as a result. Follow through can be as simple as something sliding slowly into place, or maybe it's more of a snap back action depending on how you want your animation to feel. And lastly, secondary animation. It's the final flourish that really makes all the difference. It's anything you can add that enhances that main action. So think about what that main action might cause other elements in your scene to do, or how is the environment around your elements affecting them? Our character's head is probably going to move offset to the main arm swing. The ball is going to rotate in the air, Maybe we could add some flair by giving some smoke trails to enhance that main action and show just how hard this ball is going to hit. That's all secondary animation. And now, here is a super secret bonus tip. Lean into styling. When the client asks you to make it pop, or for when you just maybe want to get a little bit funky, After Effects has a really powerful set of effects layer effects, and of course, an unlimited herd of people releasing handy and experimental new plugins and scripts every day. Speaking of styling, for this section, I grabbed this volleyball asset off of Envato, popped on a color armor effect to bring it into the style of my project, and bam. So designing your initial animation with these tools in mind, or experimenting with them as you go, can be really, really fun and weird. It can get pretty wild, so use with caution and remember your graphic design principles. Some of my favourite effects to play with are Inner Glow, Displacement and CC Lens. You can make some really cool stuff with these effects, so have a play. Now you know all the rules, you can break them. Play around and see what feels right. Maybe your idea is to be super flowy and abstract and you barely use any easing or anticipation. Or maybe you want a really clean graphic result and squash and stretch looks too realistic or cartoonish. Maybe you want your piece to feel overwhelming and busy, so you remove all the negative space. It's really up to you. So there you go. That is the principles of motion design. It's graphic design, but over time. I hope you found this enlightening, and I really can't wait to see what you make. Drop me a comment and show it off. 
Don't forget to check out the project file linked below. And until next time, keep on moving.